Scott Brown here. In the last exciting episode, I used my router to make floorboards and I was correctly advised that I was doing it wrong and I should really get a router table. Now the thing is, I don't have a router table. I have this little thing here, which acts like a router table, but it works for a quarter inch router. And the bits that I'm using are half inch, bigger router. So we need another plate and we need another bench and we need to build it all together as one. Full disclosure, there's no plan here. I'm just making this up as I go. I have no drawings, no nothing like that that I'm going with. We're just gonna use the materials that we have. I've got some plywood. I picked up a couple of things yesterday. Let's just, uh, let's just see what happens. Losing tools, losing my mind. Now whatever I make here is probably gonna be inspired by things I've seen on YouTube, Instagram, stuff like that. But also this router base that I just talked about before, this was made by Frank, Carpenter13 if you're on Instagram. He made this for me like three years ago and sent it to me from America. And he made a few other bases like this as well. So it's out of Perspex. So if you see this Frank, I'm inspired by you. This is a piece of Perspex, eight mil thick. I'm gonna build a base for my Hikoki half inch router, kind of with the same philosophy in mind. All right, this Perspex here, 50 bucks it cost me. And I'm a little bit concerned because apparently this stuff can shatter quite easily. So let's um, split it in half. And then if I, if I butcher one half, at least I got the other half, right? All right, this can be adjusted to 484, which was my measurement, I believe. Tighten that there. Oh, it's stuck. Why is it stuck? Oh yeah, that definitely moved. All right, that moved like three mil on one end. So one end's the right measurement, the other end's three, three mil short. Now the person I bought the Perspex off said, try it on the table saw. That totally worked. That's much better. Didn't split. And we've got an even cut. And I need to do something about dust extraction in here. God, look at all this stuff. Plastic. This is one of those little hinge drill bits. You know the ones that have a little sleeve on it and the sleeve comes down and the drill bit comes out and the idea is that it centers. This plastic is, is a nuisance. It really clogs everything up. All right, I'm not gonna lie. I'm nervous. The drilling is the other thing that can definitely go wrong. I just need a hole big enough for the four screws, but then the tricky one's gonna be the one in the middle. That one's gonna be a big hole. Success. Times four. I think the heat of the drill bit's working. It just kind of sinks in once it grabs. 
Okay, that's a good start. There we go. We're in. All right, so I'm gonna put it in reverse first, and then at least the teeth are dragging rather than cutting. I have to go forward just to get down. I see wood. I don't think anything broke. <laughs> I'm excited. I'm very excited. All right, talk to you later. Matt from Fine Line Architecture. Our plans are very, very close to being submitted. Um, we have to go back and forth on a lot of details for the, the doors and the beams and, but we should be submitting it to council within the week. Hey Jess, yeah. can you open the door? For me? <laughs> yeah, well, what do you think? Are you filming right now? I sure am. Oh, okay. Cool. What do you think, Jess? Yeah, what is it? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what this is. It's a router plate um, that's going to ultimately be flipped upside down and turn, and turn into a router table. Yeah, I just don't understand what that is, but cool! <laughs> Everyone's favourite time of day, smoker time. Look, Jess took your advice. Fungus gnat catches. It's caught a couple on that guy. I also changed the soil for a bunch of them. Put more grit. So yeah, hopefully they don't die. I think it's time for another coffee for me as well. So that is the first component of the router table. And now I need an actual table for the base plate to go into, right? Otherwise it's just a big fat router base plate. Are you doing it to me or the camera? To the camera. Oh, yeah, I was just ignoring you. <laughs> Don't let me forget that water bottle there. We have the base plate. Now I just need something to put it in. And I've got a few thoughts about this. All right, thought number one. I don't want another table. I don't want another surface area that I have to wheel out of my way. I've got enough of those as it is, so I'm gonna work with the tables that I have. Number two is whatever I build has to be able to hold all this mass here. And thought number three is I do need a pretty big surface area, like at least half a meter. All right, so this is gonna hang off my workbench. 350, and the router's gonna be hanging under there. Like that, you know? This is definitely inspired by Ron Pork. Don't do what I'm doing. I'm just making it up as I go. I'll put Ron Pork's plans below, and then you can actually follow someone who's actually thought about this, rather than me who's making it up on the spot. I'll put them in the description below. But yeah, I'm, I'm basing it on his idea. All right, I'm having a slight change of heart here. The 17 mil ply seems a bit thin. So I've got this thicker stuff here. This is an offcut of that little cabinet that I built. It's in the house. This cabinet here. I feel like that's less likely to bend when it's hanging off the edge of the workbench with the router weight pulling it down. So I'm gonna go with that. That means I have to lift the plywood sheet again. Oh gosh. So that's gonna drop in the middle and then, you know, I'll stand where you are and then push stuff through here. It's kind of the same philosophy as a table saw. If I wanna rip something thin, you know, if I wanna rip that into like 10 mil, trying to do that with a circular saw is gonna be tricky. I won't be able to hold the timber, it gets a bit complicated. So I take it to the table saw and just push it through. Similar philosophy here. If I wanna router long strips of wood, Trying to hold the wood and hold the router, it's not going to work. So I take the small timber to the big tool.
I'm gonna make that little wheel run along this. All right, we're working now. <laughs> Is the microphone working now? Hope so. This is the moment of glory. I've rounded off three corners and left one square so I know which way to put the face plate in. And there we go. Same level. Now I need a fence through there and the fence needs to be able to slide back and forth. So I bought some T-Track here and that T-Track, I hope it's not too windy, that T-Track needs to be like this. It needs to be flush, which means more routering. All right, I need to use my base plate for this. It's a satisfying, satisfying thing, isn't it? And the other side. There you go. That looks legit. Oh, I'm happy about this. This is going to plan. Hopefully I'll get enough time to build this fence in this video. But I'll at least get the fence tracks in. Good thing about a clear router base, you can Measure everything and see everything. 140 to the side. All right, just gotta trim these tracks, drop them in place. I'm very sad to say that I made a bit of a mistake. This thing started sliding as I was routing and I pretty much butchered the top. Ah. So this one drops in there beautifully. Flush with the end there. A little bit of a cut out there, that's, that's okay though. But then this one, it's a little, little loose, but that's okay. But then you get to the end and, uh, <laughs> big gap. No, <laughs> not great, is it? It started slipping, I think I didn't remember to clamp one end. So I've just got to screw these in, and then this will be an adjustable fence. You slide in and out. You get it right? Look, it's hanging off. It's thick enough to support the weight of the router and it doesn't take up another table. I just lift the router out, unclamp it from the table and then I can just like hang it on the wall or something.
already 4.30 and it's already getting dark. Let's jump to tomorrow. Look what I've got. This here, that goes into that aluminium track that I routed into the table. And then I loosen it, move the fence, and then turn that to tighten it. And that way you don't need a tool or a clamp or anything like that. Anyway, this video is brought to you by Squarespace. Squarespace is an all-in-one platform where you can build your brand and run your business online. I pride myself on the work that I do and I try to finish things to a high standard. And one of the best ways to showcase that is via our website. And Squarespace make that easy for us with their online portfolios and galleries, automatic image scaling, and they also have a video building platform. So if you don't have much experience recording videos and you want to promote your business with videos, Squarespace make that easy. They also make it easy for you to connect your social media to your website. So it can be your all in one place on the internet. Squarespace also offer a free trial, so you have nothing to lose. Once you're ready to launch your website, you can go to squarespace.com forward slash Scott Brown Carpentry to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. I bought a few of the T-Bolts and I got a few of these too, so I'm gonna make that fence work. Um, that'll be coming up in a future exciting episode. And I know this background is not my usual. I'll explain that in the next exciting episode. What do you think of the router table? Uh, have you done router tables in the past? Any things that I should add on, maybe some sort of dust extraction tips, I'd love to know. Let me know in the comments below, and I'll see you in the next exciting episode.